going to begin for us today by reading the words of institution as they are found for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 17. Let us hear the word of the Lord. But in the following instructions I do not commend you, because when you come together it is not for the better but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I believe it in part. And there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come to eat together, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judge ourselves, truly we would not be judged. When we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. I began reading the section before our text, uh, because though the command here to examine ourselves for the supper is well known, the context is often less so. Here the people in Corinth were gathered together, expressing their party divisions within the church and even uh, exploiting the poor for the sake of the rich. Not that we have the same temptation, the same uh, thing facing us this very day, but it's important to recognize that the command to examine ourselves for the Lord's Supper is a response to those who are abusing the Lord's Supper. We can take the abuses and draw some positive principles. Uh, we're reminded of several things. One, the Lord's Supper expresses the fellowship of God's people, the communion of the saints, which is why Paul rebuked them so sharply for expressing divisions as they came to the Lord's Supper. This is not the supper of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church or of any particular branch of the body of Christ, but this is the Lord's Supper which God's people in every place gather together who are united to Jesus by faith. This is why we invite those who are members of, uh, in good standing, of the church where the gospel is proclaimed to join with us, not simply of this church, but those who belong to the visible church on earth and are communing members in good standing. But also, secondly, the supper points us and more centrally the Lord Jesus himself. We have communion with the church and we have communion with Christ. And we remember the Lord's death until he comes. And that is why as we come to the Lord's Supper without trusting in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation and repenting of our sins and turning to him, it is as though we trampled upon Jesus Christ himself and showed contempt for his person and for his work. So, when you're called to examine yourself as you are now from this text, it is not to keep you from the supper, but to bring you, believing in Jesus Christ alone, in fellowship with his church, to come and to remember the Lord in his 
his death and that fellowship with him today. I have mentioned that it is those who have, can examine themselves and our community members who have been standing, those who have not yet made a public profession of faith, we ask you to wait at this particular time. And come at such a time that you two are ready to profess with your mouths and you believe in your hearts. So with those things before us, we're going to pray in a moment, and then the elders will pass out the elements. So let us pray. Almighty Lord, we thank you and we bless you for giving us this sacrament to be assigned to us and a seal to our hearts of the person and work of Jesus Christ. We pray now, Lord, that you would direct our hearts to the Lord, that we would be resting on him alone, that we would come repenting of our sins, turning to trust in Christ to sanctify us by his Spirit. And we pray, Lord, that you would encourage us and lift up our hearts to heaven and meet with us in fellowship and communion. We ask it in Christ's name. been reminded a moment ago from scripture, the night on which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it, just as I am ministering in his name now do, and he said, take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Our officers will pass out the bread, and then we will take together.